welcome back to another episode of FBS. Uh, I'm B. Squeichelhausen, and with me here, I have Strict Toaster. Hello, hello. And Fluxtrans. Hello. And uh, today we are continuing, of course, FBS International Airport. Um, we've got terminals down, runways down, road access down, but uh, of course we've got places for all the planes to come in, places for the cars to come in, and right now the cars won't really know where to go. So mm -hmm. before I actually started recording this episode in cities, I went through and very carefully jumped into Maya and started making assets. And here they are right here. Um, you can see them just kind of quickly presented here. Uh, I went and made a whole bunch of signs showing off all the different airlines uh, and just kind of wayfinding information for the entire airport. So right now you can see them. They're carefully designed and everything to match uh, the great intro graphics that Strict Toaster made um, a long time ago. But um, they're all they're all here, and like I kind of didn't realize how much this would add to the airport until they all went down. Like I was at first thinking like, eh, you know, it'll it'll add something. Like, but it wouldn't. Like I could just do generic signs, and it would be fine. Uh, but then actually going through and getting the branding down and getting it all lined up and as I light these in place the like thanks for flying as you leave it just really like it made that stretch of highway feel right so I, mean, I went the, through the, the extra Go effort of, that you put doing uh, with the band the branding like actually pays off like, yeah exactly <laughs> that's what I think too um, um so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was going through here and <laughs> the delay was, is, is going to be crazy yeah, in this episode. Yeah. But um, as I was going through and you see, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with this first international uh, first terminal sign. So among the signs I made are like entry ones that show off what airlines are at each terminal. Uh, and then every single terminal has an accurate um, wayfinding sign. So the departures and arrivals uh, actual signage there. Uh, and that took a really long time, especially because this international terminal is a little mixed up because right here you again have the opportunity to shift back and forth. Yeah. So these actually, these ones might not be perfect. I remember like literally the first one I checked, I'm like, wait a minute, that's not exactly right. Uh, but almost all of them are. So I'm calling did you, it them all are. Did you do them all at once as in, or as you were, you know, coming up with these, uh, with the different terminals, you were like, oh, I need to go back to Maya and like do this one extra sign. Uh, so up? I actually went first, and I have a it's literally on a sticky note or a piece of paper I have somewhere around here, writing down. I'd like pretend to be driving in and figure out like, okay, so the ramp up to departures is off to the right here and left. And it turns out that I think of our six terminals, three are one direction, three are the other direction. So we do not get points very highly on consistency. Yeah, uh, but I also do have a sort of generic uh, parking lot sign as well that I use all over the place. So it's like this way to the cell phone lot, this way to long-term parking, whatever. Um, and actually, parking brings us to a pretty nice segue here. So we're gonna get to see for quite a while, actually, some failed trials and experiments on how to try and make a round parking lot to fit into this <laughs> large curved terminal. <laughs> And this, like, as you can see, literally, I was, I'd been thinking about this for a long time. I was prepping it. I was waiting for the save file back. I'm like, okay, I know how I'm going to do it. I'll just clip it like this. And I started out like, that's terrible. It just didn't turn out. Yeah, I'm glad so, you didn't go that route. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I tried because I like, like that asset. I thought it was nicely detailed. Like, hmm, you know, there's got to be a way. Like, what if you try something like this? And, man, I thought it was going to be so easy. Uh, then, real quick, I just give up for a quick second and try to figure out how do these guys exit the airport and I unfortunately I try really hard not to use the tunnels in the game because I feel like they don't add enough visually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but eh, okay I, I I give up for this one I yeah, gave was, in I wasn't going to try to many, add like big bridges yeah, over there to really like do a, that so. a fifth deck or yeah. the option is literally people leaving the airport parking have to loop around the entire airport <laughs> which I feel like a little tunnel would probably be more realistic than that yeah, that's fair. Uh, that's, and yeah. I, I also just noticed, I wanted to point out that we have, again, the use of those, uh, uh, those little, what are they, the jet, the jetway um, things, you're using those as the, yes. as the beams. I love that. Uh, they work so it's, well for that. And it's going to be, I think, yeah. a common theme for, for the rest of this. I hope so. I mean, I think it also works to kind of tie everything together. Mm -hmm. uh, so right here, I'm just going and adding some short highway pieces to be the, what will eventually be the parking uh, payment section. 
Uh, and that was that was one of the first things I realized that an airport parking lot like needs is a place to pay for parking because that's expensive. Right. Um, Especially the ones so close to the main terminals. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Seriously. So this is my next try. I'm like, oh, this will work. It's so close, right? Um, no. <laughs> Not so much. We'll get like, there. We'll right. get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's try it like this. Let's try just all I need is the outside wall to look good, and then I can just do it with poppable concrete, right? That'll work fine. So I go through setting this and it's all faceted and I've got all the extra detail and it's like just not not doing it for me. <laughs> it's really kind of, I mean, it's not amazing to do this. Uh, and I was getting a little concerned, honestly, because there's just not parking lots that are that size. So I went on the workshop and dug deep and managed to find this modular three deck parking structure, which oh. absolutely saved me. Wow. And it's hmm. not like, it's not the most unbelievably detailed asset there is, but it's definitely enough of like a solid blank slate for me to uh, be like, you know what? Awesome. Like, let's, let's try it with this. And then it just took kind of a while trying to get this all lined up. And if you look really closely, there's still some times where the parking spots get like way too short for a car to fit, but it's... Uh, it's pretty close. There were a lot of times too when I'm experimenting with trying to get a curve smooth and I'll like start copying and pasting and realize it's just the lumpiest like curve. It's just not smooth. So I'll be like, that'll be good. And not, but that's like not day quite. and night. I mean, I'm looking at this yeah. compared to the previous tries that you yeah, were working on. And much better. Crap. Yeah. yeah, no, it's uh, it, it ended up just like when I first saw this, like this is the one that's going to work. And it still took a little bit of fiddling to make it perfect. But just by and large, like this looks like one of those giant airport parking structures that takes you 45 minutes to find a spot in. <laughs> right, and, and we actually, uh, I, I'm really interested in the way that you, you decided to do this one because I remember we talked beforehand a little bit because it was, it was kind of the SFO parking lot that we were sort of using for inspiration originally. Um, mm -hmm. But I, ha I had no idea how you were gonna do it, first of all. Like I was like, all right, Jay's gonna take it on. Perfect. I'm glad it's Jay's <laughs> <Yeah>. problem. <laughs> I, I do not want to deal with that. I'm glad that he's doing it. Um, uh, but I like that you did the, uh, the the kind of arching design rather than the full circular design. I think in the end that turned out pretty good. And actually, I don't know how you do the circular design because uh, these are kind of big assets anyway. So I don't yeah. think you can fit the whole circle anyway. But yeah. But I, I I'm gonna be honest. I took parking. I'm like, man, I can't believe those guys don't want to do the parking garage. It's gonna be so easy. I'll just use those big <laughs> ones that we have. And. Ugh. I regret that one, uh, but I think it still turned out really nicely. So, uh, in a lot of my looking around, so SFO's kind of main parking area is just this one huge garage, and I thought that was an interesting approach, but maybe not the most like visually compelling, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I did here is I decided, and you just said like just keep the arched garage rather than going the full 360 degree like circle, right? Uh, and what I do once I can actually get this moved a little closer into position to match the radius a little better. Um, I'm gonna eventually fill in the rest with surface parking. And that sort of stuff to me is like, this is the kind of more long-term parking area, mm -hmm. uh, the expensive long-term parking area. But on the inside would be like your cell phone lot where somebody would go and you'd wait for a pickup or where the Uber would wait. Or even, I think I plopped down a couple yellow taxis just, just because. Um, so it's kind of uh, an interesting set of different types of parking lots, all like small little separate ones. Cause you want to like, if you're just picking somebody up or dropping somebody off at the check-in, you want to be able to park and not have to pay like garage rates and everything. Right, right. So it ended up not being as simple as I thought it would, which I guess maybe is the theme for my portion of this episode. <laughs> and uh, just so that everybody knows, I mean, this is one of many parking right, lots that definitely. we're going to have. Yes, yeah. I mean, the, the one Flux did in the previous episode is just one of also many. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we even talked about doing like full, full on like kind of external parking along the highway that uh, that like, you know, like those lots that would service mm -hmm. with like bus or something to like the terminals. So yeah, you know, that's a, a really too. cheap long term parking. Right. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's well, relatively uh, cheap. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still yeah, expensive. Still yeah, yeah. I've uh, definitely scared myself off because I was thinking like, yeah, parking lots. Like I have a little or had a list of projects I thought would be a little simpler. And it was like parking lots, like the rental car stuff. Uh, and after parking lots, I'm scared to look at that list again. <laughs> well, wait, actually, if you do the math, 
uh, given how there isn't a city in the in the vicinity of this airport, getting an Uber or a Lyft from right. here might That's be true. actually be more cost effective to just drive and leave the car there. Drive your own car, be. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's got good train service, which uh, I guess is yeah, something right. we're oh, about to true. roll into. Right. Uh, We're going to have a very pretty good comprehensive helicopter ride service as well. I'm helicopter kidding. ride share. <laughs> That'd be cool though. Man, I, I came so close to doing those in New York. Like I had, there were some promotional things where it was like 60 bucks helicopter or a hundred oh, bucks. Dude, helicopter. You need to do that. And I'm like, that's only twice the price of an Uber. Like I'll do that once. But it was like, oh, it's that much if you can find four people to go with. Uh, I mean, you're a YouTuber. Yeah, you should yeah. be able to pay for it. Yeah, man. YouTube yeah, money. True. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been demonetized quite yet. Uh, but right here, I'm going through trying to make the check-in or the parking like payment area and really screwing around trying to figure out the best way to do it. Because I had these like individual barriers that I think flux. Did you grab those or um, I think crazy? I, I think, no, I think I did when I was building the the, inter the, the inter other parking yeah, lot. Yeah, the interchange, the parking lot. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw those and I thought that'd be great, but ended up going back and just saying like they're a little too wide to squeeze into lanes, and I wanted this to be like it's an airport, so there are going to be lots of lots of parking payment lanes. So I figured you'd go in, go through a small thing, uh, and then come out through a larger one. So I'm experimenting, trying to, but like the island didn't quite work, the booth it just didn't quite feel right. So after eventually I, I give up and use one of the toll booths that I've used many times in the past in other cities. For you mean the old asset? That's yeah, that around old forever? toll booth. But I think it still looks pretty good. <laughs> no, 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 really it does. Good. It does. So yeah. So there's another one of the uh, little just generic parking signs. Like it might not be super accurate. Yeah. There's the there's the jump cut when I think the toll booths are installed, uh, and I'm starting to plop out the surface parking. I was really excited to get this functional, and that ended up actually being a problem for uh, for you, Strict, in the next episode, where the parking lot was more popular than the airport. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so we ha I had to do some rerouting of traffic, but it's good that we're talking about this here because I don't know if we'll have time to cover that in the other right. episode. In you, yeah. yeah. But um, I was actually it. going to ask you uh, those because um, I saw you for a good I don't know five minutes struggling with the lanes uh, that. Uh, you know the the ins and outs from this parking lot uh, and mm -hmm. the booth before you actually put the booth asset. Yeah. I'm I'm guessing you were struggling with the uh the way the roads kind of overlap when you put them close to each other because the shoulder the gravel shoulder yeah, kind of like show sits on top of the other mm -hmm. part that's a tricky one yeah and that's that's the i think that's actually like when we were talking back a long time ago actually at this point but but the um the what was it green cities update i think was the one that like messed with the the junctions and yeah i really i do think that the way that that the ground junctions are just harder to make sharp angles now like it seems like it seems like if you get too close, there's just almost no way to make like that nice little pavement without having, um, you know, glitchy terrain, or at least it's different now than it used to be. So kind of a bummer, but not a huge deal, I guess, in the end. Yeah. So what you see me there real quick is just going and I used the ploppable concrete thing, the four by four to make it, of course, I immediately get rid of it, uh, but to be able to have clean concrete lines kind of off axis. Mm. Um, and then just, I screw it up by dry, dragging roads straight through. But this, because I was looking and a lot of these are just these small sorts of lots surrounded by nice, uh, nice like greenery, which becomes a whole nother problem for me. And really, I'm like, man, this would have been a flex trance job uh, to get to get some like manicured lawns and greenery and everything. Uh, but I ended up having to having to struggle. And I remember I sent screenshots. And you're like, wow, I love that. I'm like, I've done it. I've achieved. <laughs> this yeah, is pulled it off. I thought uh, yeah, I really thought so. Yeah. That's been that's been one of the things that's been terrifying me about stuff I've got to get done in Gramercy is like finishing fauna. I just can't. Uh, or you at mean least flora? I didn't think I could. Yep. Are we adding animals? There we go. Just I wish you could do animals. Roaming around the runways. Or a SimCity Four, you could draw animals in. Oh, you totally. Know? I mean, you totally can though. You can add the yeah. the wildlife spawns, dude. Yeah. I should have put one like right in the middle of the runways <laughs> and then not told you guys. And then that way, when Strix's trying to make the runways, they're just like bears <laughs> running around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> uh, so right here, I I searched and unfortunately found that we didn't have one. Uh, but I wanted some pull through spots for like proper limos. Uh, we've got a limo car up there that I could see, but I wanted like a prop to drop in here. So I think I end up filling this area with taxi cabs. But this is sort of the like waiting area for livery cars or one of them. Uh, just done that to to be a little different, I guess. Um, I 
done a ton of these. You can see this is my my contribution to the prop count is a bunch of lines. Uh, I figured, man, that'd be those are way too small to do anything with. So yeah, I always I do that. that. Honestly, I always make the custom ones. I just I, I feel like yeah. I have a really hard time with those like preset ones. They just never line up right. So yeah, I'm yeah. sure this is tabbing think, out again think, to go and browse the Steam Workshop trying to figure out if like man, is there a shorter line, an even shorter one out there? I think you it's need just, to build them in very specific ways for those to actually work. But my main yeah. issue with those is that they're a little bit too thick. Uh, for, yeah. for in this case, it's fine, but in some other cases, it's like, oh, this line is like huge. Oh, you mean like you make, yeah. making custom ones? Yeah, no, no, I mean like the width of these. Uh, so, for example, you can, you can compare the uh, vanilla parking lot spaces mm -hmm. to these custom ones, and you can oh. clearly see how one is thicker than the other. Yeah. But there's yeah, even yeah, like I like bike middle lane, which is like old school vanilla. Old. School. That is like really yeah, <laughs> old school vanilla. That's like really thin and like also like the opacity is kind of like halfway. So that mm. that just fits anything. It's great. Yeah. I love it. Right. So I used a mix here of the green, uh, I think King Lido curbs, and then these Ronix curbs. I think these are Ronix, but they they use uh, just the actual concrete texture, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it means you can also decal on top of them, which I don't remember doing here, but there's a chance that I did. Talk, talking uh, about concrete for a second, I want to address something that uh, many of you may have noticed. Uh, we're having a hard time trying to sync our color settings between episodes. So, uh, Flux episodes look a, w a way, and Jay's look a different way, and mine's look totally different too. So, mm -hmm. you know, we literally copied settings, uh, like screen sharing, like, oh, okay, so you put 0 0.5 on this setting yeah. and 2 on the other setting, and yet we can not get things to look right. So, yeah. we're still we apologize working on for it. that, I guess. I think, <laughs> maybe someday we'll get it right. Uh, I'll be the first to admit, I feel like a lot of my settings problems come from me forgetting to No, that's, that's literally correctly. exactly what I was going to say. I was like, every single time I record the episode and then right after, I'm just like, oh, I didn't even Damn change it. I forgot <laughs> I'll, that I'll setting. like relaunch, record all my cinematics and then be like watching them back like, that's weird. I didn't think that road had white lines. And it turns out I didn't turn on. Uh, uh, Red United. Red United is, is yeah. I think we all suffer from like, it. Oops. Yeah, because yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't default back to normal. So I have to yeah. remember to change it every time. And you'd think by now I'd have figured out like a checklist, but <laughs> nope. Yeah, I, I mean, um, especially with the, what is it, like relight mod now? I think we're just going to have yeah. to build out like a whole template file that's like, all right, checklist. Here's all the stuff you have to do. Because like, I'm going to start forgetting. Because we got to do, we got to like relight settings plus the, uh, what's it, the um, ultimate eye candy settings on top of that. Yep. And those have relight. to like align or it's all messed up. And, and I think the settings that go through a relight, ultimate eye candy, obviously the LUT. Um, Trying to make sure that Rodinated. now, yeah, Roads United is on. Make sure that the ploppable asphalt colors are the same. Because yeah. even inside Roads United, we have the Roads United like colors. So for Gramercy, it's got very uh, kind of faded concrete looking mm -hmm. freeways and things. Ploppable asphalt and ploppable concrete have their own colors of I think uh, I think you're using Theme Mixer here for the concrete. You have like the darker Gramercy version of the concrete. Yep. Oh. I'm also using Theme Mixer, which that's I keep so forgetting weird. to turn off. So that's overriding the, the theme that we're all using. Mm -hmm. uh, and, ugh. That's ugh. okay. It looks good <laughs> enough. We'll see. <laughs> Close enough, think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's the in-universe explanation. These are three identical airports. It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> they all live but, in the same parallel universe, but not yeah. quite. <laughs> That's right. This is a multi multiverse of airport. <laughs> done. Ex that explains explain, everything. Yeah, every done. everything that you see that doesn't quite work out, multiverse. Multiverse. It's Perfect. it's but really it's a strange situation because mm -hmm. everything in these different universes is identical except for the grass color. <laughs> Actually, the way the grass isn't the grass kind of like the same. The no, only the thing that's same, pretty usually. consistent. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, like relatively. For some reason, well, I just every time that you make episodes strict, I feel like you just like nail the color, like the color correction yeah. or like the capturing. I think that my like archaic, terrible way of like capturing footage is uh, contributing to my footage looking differently. But um, it's possible. Yeah. But also, I specifically set very specific times of the day, like virtual mm. times of the day, not like, right. you know, my real times of the day. Oh God, uh, no, so insane. that, God you know, like, record. like get that golden hour, you know, that magic hour going and you get like the, the red hues from the sun and, and the cool light. Now that we're using uh, Relight, I think it's a little bit easier right. and you can achieve this like teal and orange beauties that are like super cinematic. So 
yeah you you'll probably see that in the next couple episodes so we're, i've been like playing around with the settings a bit more right um i think that looks a little bit better and hopefully we can translate all those settings uh to so all the episodes yeah we'll please. work harder next time <laughs> um but right here i'm going through and attempting foliage attempting some sort of like slightly manicured sort of very airporty thing uh and jumping back and forth for material reference all the way to um to the front of the airport which is way done already um and now of course the second i bring that up we actually hard cut to uh building some passageways to metro overhaul stations this is actually presented a little out of order if you're uh eagle-eyed there's uh been a little bit of this but when i got the the version of the mod um i actually had early access to it uh, but when they when I got that, I immediately stopped doing the parking lot. I'm like, I need to build this now, uh, mm -hmm. and distracted myself from from parking lot stuff. So right here is kind of ends up the, the final area of parking lot slash a little bit of the metro stuff. So we're seeing the metro being finished before the metro is built, which is a little bizarre. Uh, right? But, can we can we also just real quick uh, point out? Vasmir's super awesome uh, elevated yes. pathways because those are like like literally exactly what we wanted and he he nailed it in like it was like two hours or something crazy like yes. that like yeah. like literally we messaged him and we're like you know it'd be awesome if we could have some like elevated walkways and I was expecting you know maybe like a week or so because he's probably busy and we hadn't even really talked in a little while and then he just like yep. busted it out like the same day I was like oh my god we, that's amazing it's like hey do you mind if we like here's the source that we found and he'll go and be like okay I like those but can I like these ones are better and we have like four other airports and like four other great locations and sources yeah he definitely like, killed it on that one for sure wow like really okay good. yeah but they look awesome. So now we've jumped back in time as I place the stations I just finished up. Can, can we talk uh, about can we talk about uh, the uh, uh, the props that are related to this station? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I was uh, going for. <laughs> so these stations I liked. I think they fit the theme well enough. Uh, but unfortunately, they come with a whole bunch of garbage props at the bottom, like little parking spots and things that we really don't want to have. Mm -hmm. So I disabled them all universally for mine, uh, except the parking spots, which I couldn't do it. So I think I covered them or hid them as well as I could. Strict gets the save after I finish and it's just like, um, what are these? Because they're like soda machines out on the tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it turns out that's not a, a universal setting that comes coupled with the save. So nope. that's a little annoying. Um, these stations, I don't think are actually gonna be our final ones. I've got one of these like, well, man, whenever I find the time, I want to remake some some slightly smaller ones to work better. Uh, right now, quickly pulling pulling the whole terminal out of the way. You guys get to see kind of how the sausage is made in there. Uh, at the time of this recording, all the other stations that are out there are like brick, like Brooklyn style ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which, that's this why is we really kind of the those. only. This is really only one. Yeah. The only more modern one, and I, I remember downloading this. This was like one of my first modded train stations too. Yeah, this yeah. it's just been one. around forever. This is Cedar Valley stuff, right yeah. there. Yeah, for me, it's, it's fine. Oxford. I think it matches well enough. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Just the props. It's annoying. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's very old school in terms of how it's detailed with the props. So, uh, real quick, just placing these. I really like. I got to use the hallway piece from that actual airport asset uh, or terminal asset there, which was uh, pretty fun. Uh, lined it up kind of unintentionally like this will connect up something someday and then just dropped it like it's perfect it's perfect <laughs> uh right here is actually a part that i'm pretty proud of i guess uh this is as tiny as it is this is a part of the reason why this had to wait for the metro overhaul 2 update to come out i really wanted this like switchover area uh kind of inside so the way that the original plan we had we just i just did like a sketch and thought this is great uh I hope you guys agreed that that original yeah, sketch no, was pretty good. No, I liked it. Good. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. But uh, it had a I really disagree. unique. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it had a really unique figure eight uh, air train like terminal link layout, and unfortunately, I, mean, I say unfortunately, I was the one who built the terminals. I had say over this, uh, but I ended up changing my mind uh, and going for a different sort of look. But I still got this opportunity to squeeze the tracks of both directions next to each other. Um, and eventually I used the single track options to make a crossover. So I'd imagine like normally the trains would go in a full route, but if like part of the track was out of service or if there was a problem, they'd be able to, yeah, right here. 
it just it's kind of a neat little thing that they be able to switch over and use and still access different terminals and things like that to uh to keep working at i just think it adds a little bit of interest to show off do, like do trains actually use that or is it just for aesthetics not as they're routed right now they don't use it but i, I imagine really like yeah. If there's a like if there's a stalled train, you don't want to stop the entire system. So no, let, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be kind of for that. Uh, so right here, I'm going and just there was a slightly too steep slope over there, and um, as I sent screenshots, one of the airports we had been looking at for inspiration was Miami, which has this really cool spot where the trains run along the roof of the oh, terminal. Yeah. That's so cool. And we'd looked at that and be like, yeah, let's definitely do that. I completely forgot about it, built the train, set it, like, hey, weren't we planning to run them on the roof? And, well, <laughs> I'm like, damn it. <laughs> that would be good, a no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, I go through, and it was just such a cool, unique idea. I, I try to squeeze it. I really want to get a shorter length station, because right. Uh, right now, I mean, you look, the trains are these tiny little two-car things uh, ripped off of JFK. So... They're, they use like maybe 10% of the platform length there. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, huh? It's, which, yeah, I mean, when I'm at an air train station, like when I was at JFK or even in San Francisco or something, there's definitely a lot of platform length to length of train, mm -hmm. but this is way over the top. So hopefully we'll get shorter stations, which will allow more of that to run on the roof. Yeah, I think you have uh, two problems there, specifically with that curved terminal. I mean, yeah. the, it's a very long straight, uh, straight segment that kind of like forces you, like it basically forces you away from the curvature of the terminal. And yep. then having to to wrap the, the you know, the both tracks on the end makes it right. even more challenging. But uh, yeah, if we can get a shorter one, that'll be absolutely perfect. Yeah. And sure, so that one's the, I think probably the most temporary, I guess. Like, I'm actively searching out a replacement for that one and kind of passively searching a replacement for the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going through here, and again, this is really inspired by the way that JFK routes their air trains, is that one loop does all the terminals, and then the other one in the other direction always goes out to the rental cars and, like, out to the other terminals. So I kind of built this as, like, the core loop hits every terminal except that international terminal. And then the international terminal is going to continue out to have the train that connects to right. the, rental the heavy rail connection, like SFO, uh, which I was actually there like three days ago, uh, <laughs> riding the air train to connect to the to the BART subway. So I was very excited about this. This is actually my favorite part of the whole system, is it going all the way over the triple stack interchange. <laughs> I love and that. I That's so great. It, it's just, it's such a, like, you can... For me, that really shows a lot of like storytelling almost in the airport. Uh, here we go. I've restarted the game and forgot to turn on the right LUT. You know what? This <laughs> this this interchange works in so many levels. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm done. Okay, bye guys. See see you see you next time. <laughs> Thanks for recording. That, that was, that, yeah, please comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, we're actually had to say it. fairly close to the end. But you can see right now I'm quickly going and throwing some stops all over, grabbing the SkyConnect trains, throwing them on, uh, figuring out how to fix it all, make it all work. Um, and I feel like the concrete is darker now. Uh, yeah, yes, I think it's actually yeah. default is what it is. <laughs> oh. uh, this, this is going to kill me. Uh, but anyway, we've uh, come to, I kind of did before the cinematics really officially start, a couple shots of the of just riding the train. They weren't quite smooth enough for me to include in the rest. But uh, here we go. Now you can see just like trains appearing from nowhere. Uh, but that's about it for this. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. As always, the next episode will be over on channel Strict Toaster. And yes. uh, I don't really know. There's the parking lot. So. Uh, Thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all three of us if you want to get all of these the day they come out, always. Uh, make sure you catch up on what you missed on. Uh, and that's it. So thanks again, and I will see you next time. See you. See you. Yeah, we really need to do something. <laughs>